All right, hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining. My name is Shane. In today's lesson, we're going to continue going over data structures. In our previous lessons, we went over list and arrays. In today's lesson, we're going to go over set. If you're not familiar with set, stick around. We're going to jump right in. All right, hey, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, what is a set? In computer science, a set is an abstract data type that can store unique values without any particular order. Now, the key thing to note here is unique values. So in a previous lesson, I went over lists, specifically array list. Now, array list or list can have the same value more than once. It's not unique. The key thing to remember with sets, well, it's going to be unique values. You cannot insert the same value into a set more than once. It will just ignore the, the duplicate value. So that's a key thing to note about sets. All right, hey, let me show you an example of how to do this. All right, so on my desktop here, I've got some examples already made up. We're going to go over those one by one. I'm going to go pretty quickly. Let's uncomment this. Now, I'm creating a set. A set's an abstract type. What does that mean? Well, in Java, that means it's an interface. So I have an interface called set. Any class that implements that interface has to implement certain features that, that the interface defines. A set is an abstract type. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the concrete type of hash set. I'm going to show you how to create a hash set. In order to use the set interface and hash set, I have to import them in Java. So you'll notice up here, I'm importing javautil.hashset and I'm importing javautil.set. Let's look at how I create this hash set. I'm going to do set and using generics, I'm going to say I want my set to contain strings. So I'm doing set less than string, telling it what I want to store, greater than sign. Then I'm going to define my variable users set and I'm going to say set, I want to say create a set of strings call it user set, it's equal to new hash set. So here I'm saying I want my set to be a hash set underneath. I've got my less than and greater than sign here. You'll notice that I have string there. With certain versions of Java, you don't have to say that twice. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So I have equals new hash set, less than, greater than, open parentheses, close parentheses. So I'm creating a hash set. I'm setting it to the variable called users set. Now, how do I add data to the set? Well, much like a list, exactly like a list, you can just add data to the set. So I'm going to do user set dot add Shane. I'm adding the string Shane. I'm going to do users set dot add Christina. I'm adding the name Christina. User set dot add Nick. I'm adding the name Nick. So in the previous lesson where we went over lists, you'll see this worked exactly, this, this works exactly the same way as a list. I'm adding things to this data structure, to this collection. Let's run it. And there I go. So I have a hash set. It's got Shane, Nick, and Christina. I have a hash set that contains these three items. What happens if I try to add a duplicate into this collection, right? What happens if I try to add Shane in there more than one time? I'm going to uncomment this code. So I'm using users add Shane, user add Christina, user add Nick. I'm printing it out, and then I'm going to add Shane again, and then I'm going to print it out. Let's see what happens. The first time it printed out, we got Shane, Nick, Christina. The second time it printed out, we have Shane, Nick, and Christina. It didn't it? Didn't add it. Can't have the same value in the set more than once. It won't let you do that. That's the key feature of a set: unique values, unlike a list. A list would have let me add that item in there more than once. Key thing to note. Sometimes the difference between whether you want to use a list or a set is that key factor. If you want to make sure your data is unique, use a set. Don't use a list. All right. Well, how does it know whether it's unique or not? How does it know whether it's, whether it's, what it's adding is unique or not? Well, a hash set, I believe, has a hash map underneath. Correct me if I'm wrong. And before it hashes that value at, it's going to it's going to it's just going to hash that value. It's going to put it into a certain slot in a hash map. It's going to use a hash to do that. So before it puts it into a slot, it's going to take whatever value is already there, if there is a value, and it's going to compare. It's going to compare using the dot equals method. It's going to take the current value of Shane. It's going to say Shane dot equals Shane. And if it equals, it's not going to insert. It's not going to keep both values. It's only going to keep one. Not sure I explained that well, but key thing to notice is it uses equals. A hash set uses equals to determine whether that value is unique or not. So that's a key thing to remember, equals. So does Shane equals Shane? Let's run that real quick. 
And of course it's true, Shane does equal Shane. That's what it does in underneath. That's how it knows to throw one of them away. Move to the next example. How do I know if a hash set contains a value already, contains a certain value already? Well, the hash set or set interface has a contains method. This will tell you whether a value already exists in the set. Let's run it. Does user set contains Shane, true or false? Let's run it. So there's my true. It does contain Shane. How about Advil? Does user set contain Advil? Let's run it. And false, does not contain Advil. So this contains is taking this Advil and using the dot equals to see if it's equal to other values in the hash set. Let's move on to the next example. How do I get the size of a set? How do I know how many elements are in a set? Well, just like with list, you have a size method, dot size, okay? An array has a dot length property. A list has a dot size method and a set has a dot size method. This is gonna tell us how large our set is. Let's run it. My set is three. I have a set with a size of three. There's three items in my set. Let's move to the next one. How do I remove something from my set? So just like list, you can remove something from your set by passing in the value you want to remove. It will look into your set and find the value. And if it's there, it will remove it for you. So I want to remove the value of Shane from my set. I do user set dot remove and the value I want to remove it. If that value is there, it will remove it. Let's run it. So you'll see here, I printed out my set. I printed it out after I removed Shane. At the very beginning, I had Shane, Nick, Christina, now I only have Nick and Christina in my set. So dot remove went to your hash set and it removed that value of Shane. How do I know if my set is empty? Well, a hash set has a is empty method in it. A set has a is empty method. So this will tell you whether your set is empty or not. Let's run it. Is user set user set is empty equals false. It's not empty. We know that it has Nick and Christina in there. So false. A set has all these helper methods on there to help you do certain things. Pretty neat. Let's look at how do I empty my set? How do I clear all of my set out? I could use the dot remove on each element in my set, but I don't want to do that, right? So how can I just clear it out all together? Well, a set has a dot clear method. So when you call dot clear, it's going to clear everything out, I think. Let's run it. Let's see. I did user set dot clear, and then I did is user set empty? Is it empty? Well, before the empty was false because it had Nick and Christina in it, and it was false. I cleared it out, and now is empty is true. So it cleared it out. All right, I'm gonna comment that back out. How do I iterate my set? How do I go through each value in my set? Just like with a list, you can use a for each loop. So I have for string user in user set. For each user, for each user in user set, system out print that user. So I'm using a for each loop. Let's run that. And you'll see it's printing it out here. Nick and Christina printed out each of my users in that set. All right, next. What's another way I can loop through my set? Well, a set, you can also use user set for each and you can use a lambda expression. System dot out colon colon print line. That's basically saying, Call the method print line on system dot out, pass in for each user. So pass in each user in the user set to this method print line on system dot out. So this is using a lambda expression. It's using a, a, a basically a for each on that collection. You can also do this with list. I didn't show that in a previous lesson with list, but you can also do this with list. I'll put a video up here, it talks about lambdas, lambda expressions. If you're not familiar with lambdas, really neat stuff, really cool stuff. I'll put a link here, here, somewhere in here. Go check that video out. I also put it at the end of this video. Check it out, pretty neat stuff. So what will this do? This is so for each user, for each user in user set, call the system out print, right? That should be what it does. All right, let's run it. Here's my first for each. I printed out, printed out Nick and Christina. Here's that uh, for each using the Lambda expression. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's look at a different kind of set. So far we've been using 
a hash set. Now there are other kinds of sets. I'll briefly touch upon those sets. Next is a tree set. What's the difference in a tree set and a hash set? Well, one key difference is when you're adding stuff to a hash set or you're removing stuff from a hash set or you're running the method contains on a hash set, it's O1 time. It's constant time. It's big O of one because underneath that hash set is a hash map and hash map is uh, for the most part O of one, big O of one, constant time. It's very fast, right? So that's a hash set. Now, the key thing about a hash set is even though you have unique values, they're not in any order. There's no order to those values. You can't order those values. This Shane, Christina, Nick order does not stick around. This was a list. These items would be in that insertion order, okay? Since it's not a list, it's a hash set, there is no order. The values will be unique, but they won't be in order. If I were to move, let's put Nick above Shane here, get rid of it there, and let's run it. We're going to see that Shane is still shown first there, Nick is next, and then Christina, even though I'm putting Nick in the set first. So basically a hash set does not keep order does not keep insertion order or any other kind of order but a hash set does provide the uniqueness of values because it is a set and it's super fast for adding removing containing because inside the hash set there's a hash map underneath that's the key features of a hash set let's go down to this tree set so on this tree set well what's the difference well a tree set isn't as fast as a hash set because it doesn't use a hash map underneath it uses a tree underneath in java a tree set uses a red black tree. That's the particular data structure. It's too advanced for me to go over in this video, but just know that a tree set uses in Java a red black tree underneath. With a red now with a red black tree, most operations on that red black tree are going to be O log of n. It's going to be big O log of n. Okay, that's a logarithmic time. So an add, a remove, or contains call on a tree set. It's going to be big O log of n, logarithmic time. It's not as fast as a hash set. It's not as fast as big O of 1, constant time. It's big O log n, which is logarithmic time. So that's one thing to note. A tree set is slower, not as fast as a hash set. But what's the benefit of a tree set? Well, you still get your unique values. It is a set. The benefit is there's some order to this tree set. Okay, when you insert something into the tree, into the tree set, it's going to use the compare to method on each object you insert, and it's going to use natural ordering to order stuff in the tree. So here I'm adding Shane and Christina to the tree. What do you think is the natural order of Shane and Christina? Alphabetical order. I think Christina should go first, right? So I'm putting Shane and Christina. Let's print that out. Let's see what it does. Now, if I look at the tree set, what's first in the tree? Christina. It's natural order. In this case, natural order is alphabetical order. Christina and Shane. It's using a compare to on the each object to know what the natural order is. And it's going to keep whatever you insert into that set in a natural order. Sometimes you have a process or operation where you want values to be in a certain order. A natural order sometimes fits the bill. So this is the benefit of a tree set. You have ordering. It's a little bit slower than a hash set, but you still have uniqueness and you get ordering. That's the benefit of a tree set. A hash set, you don't get any ordering. That is a tree set. A hash set uses a hash map underneath. A tree set uses a red, in Java, uses a red black tree underneath. All right, let's look at one more set. So before we end the lesson, let's go over one more set. I've got a linked hash set. So we've gone over a hash set. We've gone over a tree set, all right? They both provide a way to collect data, sets of data. They both provide uniqueness. A hash set is faster than a tree set, but a tree set has a natural, source things in a natural order. What's different about a linked hash set? Well, a linked hash set has a hash set underneath. It's also almost as fast as a hash set. The difference is, is a linked hash set provides ordering. Now, what type of ordering does it provide? Its ordering is based upon insertion order. So a linked hash set not only uses a hash set underneath to store the data, but it also uses a linked list, okay? So that's why I'd say it's almost as fast as a hash set. It stores the data in a hash set, but it also store, links it together, okay? So it keeps ordering. It keeps the insertion order. Now, we saw a tree set keeps a natural order, and a hash set doesn't keep any order. 
Well, a linked hash set keeps insertion order. So more times than not, you may not need a natural order. You may want to keep the order of which you insert stuff into the set. Well, if you need to do that, a link set is the way to go. It's almost as fast as a hash set. With a tree set, we saw if I added Shane and Christina and printed it out, it's going to put Christina first because C is be comes before S or natural ordering. Now, in this case, it should put Shane first because that's the order of which I inserted it. I inserted Shane first. Let's see if that works. Linked hash set. Inserted Shane and Christina, right? Now, let's say I added one more. Users linked hash set dot add. And I'm going to put Adam, right? Well, if this was a tree set, natural ordering would put Adam first. Since it's a linked hash set, it should preserve the, the order of which I inserted the data. That's the order it should be. Let's run it. Now you notice it's Shane, Christina, and Adam. It's keeping the order of which I inserted items. So I get my uniqueness from having a set. I get to store a collection of data, but I get to store it in a certain order, uh, the order of insertion. Pretty neat. It's almost as fast as a hash set. It's big O of one, constant time, pretty fast. Almost as fast as a hash set, other than you have to have maintain a linked list also. So it's pretty fast. Now, what if I were to change this to, what if I were to change this to a tree list? So we see now it's keeping the insertion order, Shane, Christine, and Adam. If I change this to a tree list, a tree set rather, what's gonna happen? The order should be natural order, which would be alphabetical order. So I'm gonna run it. So this is no longer a linked hash set, it's a tree set and it's in natural order. Adam, A first, C next, Christina, Shane next, right? Tree set, natural ordering. A linked hash set uses the insertion order. Key things to note, let me change this back. We've gone over what a set is. It's an abstract data type that stores a collection of unique values. One way of implementing that is hash set. Hash set uses a hash map underneath. There is no particular ordering. It's constant time, big O of one. You can also use a tree set. Tree set is logarithmic time. It's, it's big O of log n for most of its actions. It does keep things in order. It keeps things in a natural order. With strings, that's alphabetical order. Another type of set is a linked hash set. Almost as fast as a hash set but it also keeps order, unlike a hash set. The linked hash set keeps the order of insertion, which is sometimes better than your alphabetical or natural order. Those are three different types of sets. So that's it for today. I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, leave me a message below, and I will definitely get back to you. Again, my goal is to help others learn how to program. So if you have a question, leave me a message below, and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, hey, click subscribe, click that like button. It helps me get this video out to others so others can be helped also from this information. Thanks for watching. I'm going to put links here, here, somewhere in here to videos on arrays and videos on list, right? And if you haven't checked those out, be sure to check those out. Hey, again, thanks for watching. Have a great week.